The method of partial fractions can be used to evaluate the integrals of ratios of polynomials p over q where the degree of the numerator p is less than the degree of the denominator q which degree we denote by n so the basic idea is, th is that we write q the denominator in factorized form that allows us to split p over q into the sum of partial fractions simpler fractions each, for each of which we need to determine what coefficients go in their numerator. Once we have this partial fractions decomposition, we can integrate p over q as the sum of the integrals of these simpler partial fractions that we can evaluate. Now, there are different cases to consider depending on how q factorizes. So if all zeros of q are real and distinct, that means that q has this factorized form, it's, a f it's the product of linear terms that are all different. In that case, p over q can be written as the sum of these partial fractions for uh, the roots or zeros of q uh, appearing in the denominator and these unknown coefficients a1 to an are the ones we need to find and then integrating p over q is just the sum of these integrals of uh, these partial fractions that we can express in terms of the natural logarithm. Now this sum we can write um, in a more succinct form using the sigma notation and then it takes this form. Now um, what if we still have n real zeros for q but they are not all distinct, there are some repeated zeros. In that case q can factorizes in this form is still the product of linear factors but certain factors repeat appear more than once and those that um, is indicated by these exponents that might that may uh, could be greater than one so these exponents are called the multiplicities of those zeros r1 to rk and then what we want is the sum of these multiplicities to still give us uh, n the degree of the polynomial q now in this factorized with this factorized form of q p over q uh, can be run can be written as the sum of these expressions these partial fractions each of which we know how to integrate using the natural logarithm or simply the power rule so again here the coefficients a sub i alpha are the ones we need to determine before integrating term by term um, now the final case is when q the denominator uh, has certain zeros that are not real so in that case, Q factorizes into this form a, prod a certain number of products of uh, linear factors appearing with, their, with the multiplicities of those zeros, but then there will be quadratic factors, again with certain exponents, that uh, have no real zeros. For each of these quadratic polynomials, the discriminant B sub J squared minus 4 times C uh, sub J is negative. But still, the total degree of the polynomial on the right-hand side here should be n, the degree of q. Now, in this case, p over q can be written as the sum of these partial fractions, each of which we know how to integrate once we have uh, these coefficients a sub i alpha, b sub j beta, and c sub j beta. Now, let's see some examples. Use the method of partial fractions to find the coefficients a1 and a2 so that this relation is valid. Pause the video and input your answers in the boxes. Hope you paused it and have found that a1 is negative 3 and a2 is positive 3. You can find the, these coefficients by recombining the fractions, uh, having the common denominator x minus 2 times x minus 4, and cross multiplying gives you a1 times x minus 4 plus a2 times x minus 2 in the numerator um, which means that we have a1 plus a2 times x uh, for uh, the linear term and negative 4a1 plus 2a2 for the constant term in the denominator in the numerator now uh, the, const the coefficients of powers of x need to match in the numerators for this to hold for all, for all x. So um, what we need is uh, the coefficient of x 
on the left hand side in the numerator is zero there's no x whereas the coefficient of x on the right hand side there is a1 plus a2 whereas the coefficients or of the x to the zero uh, term so the constants are six and negative four a1 plus two a2 now this is a system of linear equations from a for a1 and a2 that we need to solve from the first equation we see that a2 must be negative a1 using that in the second equation gives us 6 equals minus 4a1 minus 2a1 so that in total is 2a1 with a minus sign so that's negative 2a1 dividing both sides by negative 2 gives us a1 b negative 3 and since we knew that a2 must be negative a1 so that must be positive 3 let's look at the next question use the method of partial fractions to find these three coefficients so that the relation holds true pause the video and input your answers in the boxes hope you pause it and have found these numbers again we do the same thing as before we recombine these uh, fractions to have the common denominator x plus 2 cubed in this case and that means that a11 is multiplied by x1 x plus 2 squared a12 by x plus 2 and a13 by just 1 so if, if we expand the parentheses in the numerator we get and collect common uh, uh, the common uh, factors of powers of x then we get uh, x squared to have the coefficient a11 x to the first power has four coefficients uh, 4 times a11 plus a12 finally the constant term is 4 times a11 plus 2 times a12 and a13 all added so this is all divided by x plus 2 cubed and now all we need to do is just match the coefficients of powers of x on both sides so that means that the coefficient of x cubed 3 on the left hand side need to match needs to match the coefficient of uh, x squared over there a11 so a11 is already found then the coefficient of x is 4 on the left hand side and is 4 times a11 plus a12 on the right hand side from this combined with the fact that we already know a11 should be 3 4 times a11 is 12 therefore a12 needs to be 4 minus 12 that is negative 8 for the uh, constant terms we have negative 6 on the left hand side and 4 times a11 plus 2 times a12 plus a13 so 4 times a11 is 12 uh, minus 2 times a12 is negative 16 so that's negative 4 therefore a13 needs to be minus 2 let's look at the next question use the method of partial fractions to find the coefficients a b c that make this equation valid pause the video and input your answers in the boxes okay i hope you paused it and i found these numbers for a b c so again we just recombine the partial fractions uh, to, to get for a common denominator x times x squared plus 4 and then in the numerator we have a times x squared plus 4 plus x times bx plus c expanding the brackets and collecting common coefficients uh, of powers of x we have for x squared coefficient the coefficient a plus b for x uh, the coefficient is c and for the constant term we have 4 times a as, a, as the coefficient and then all we need to do is just match the coefficients of powers of x on both sides so the qu uh, quadratic term has 0 for a coefficient on the left hand side but a plus b on the right hand side the linear term also has 0 for a coefficient on the, on the left hand side but c on the right hand side and the constant term is 20 on the left hand side and is 4a on the right hand side 
Now the second equation gives us c equals 0 immediately. The third equation divided by 4 gives us a equals 5. And using that in the first equation uh, tells us that b must be negative 5. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.